Hello, and welcome back to the Fruit of the Spirit series. Last time, we learned all about the second fruit of the Spirit, joy, Paul and Silas in jail, and how we can have joy in the Lord even in hard times. Today, we are going to be learning all about the third fruit of the Spirit, peace. So, without delay, let's begin. So, today we will be learning all about the third fruit of the Spirit, peace. But before we begin, let me ask you a question. What is one thing that has caused you to worry? Maybe you have a big test coming up and you're not prepared. Maybe you have to do something that seems scary. Maybe even you have to move to a new place. Lots of things in life can cause us to worry. But do you know that we can have peace even when we go through stressful situations? Let's read Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 33 to find out more. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field how they grow, and toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In this scripture, it tells us not to worry about anything not to worry about what we should eat, what we will drink. We shouldn't even worry about what we should wear. It tells us that God even provides for the birds. And if God will provide for the birds, how much more will he provide for us? It says we should not worry about any of the things of the world, but keep our eyes and mind focused on the kingdom of God. And all the things that we need will be given unto us. Wow. Let's find out a little more about trusting God and having peace in Acts chapter 27, verse 1 to 12. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners onto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustband, and entering into a ship of Adram Itium, they launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. The next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed to Cyprus. 
because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there a centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing to Italy, and he put us therein. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scare were come over against Sindus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, over against Salome, and hardly passing it, came into a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now, when much time was spent, and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed. Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the laden and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the masters and owners of the ship, more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix, and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the south and northwest. In our previous video, we learned that Paul was a missionary sent by God to preach the gospel. In the temple, he was attacked and arrested, and soon after the rulers had heard his case, he requested to be tried before Caesar. And then he was on a ship, being sent to Rome, and the ship was going very slow because of the winds, and Paul warned the sailors and the captain that a storm was coming and that it would cause much danger to the ship and their lives. But the captain decided to keep sailing. Let's find out what happens next in Acts chapter 27, verse 13 to 20. And when the south winds blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Crete but not long after there arose against it a tempest wind called Eero Clyden. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up the wind, we let her drive and running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into quicksand, strike sails, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Oh no, this is not good. Paul was right. Soon after, the wind started getting stronger and waves tossed them around and the storm was so bad that they couldn't even see the sun or the moon or even the stars. This is really bad. What's going to happen to Paul and all the people that are on the ship? Well, we will find out after this short break. Remember this photo from our previous Fruit of the Spirit video? Well, the correct answer was seven. The word joy was hidden seven times in this photo. Good job if you got it. Now, it's time to move on to today's game. 
The Mystery Word, Fruit Edition. In the game, The Mystery Word, Fruit Edition, you will be given photos like these three, and you will have one minute to figure out what the mystery word is. You can do this by taking the first letter from each word and then putting it together, like the D from dog, the A from ape, and the D from dance. And when you put those all together, it makes dad. It might be helpful to get a piece of paper and a pencil. When the game is done, we will take each of our words and put them together to make our special word. So, are you ready? Let's begin. Photo number one. Photo number two. Photo number three. Photo number four. What is the mystery word? Well, let's find out what the mystery word is. Let's take the P from pig, the E from egg, the A from arrow, and the R from rope. When we put that all together, it spells pear. Our mystery word is pear. Good job. Let's continue. But first, Let's add pear to our clue list. Okay, time for the mystery word number two. Photo number one. Photo number two. Photo number three. Photo number four. Photo number five. Photo number six. Photo number seven and photo number eight. What is the mystery word? Well, let's find out what the mystery word is. Let's take the E from ear, the G from goose, the G from grater, the P from popcorn, the L from library, the A from ax, the N from numbers, and the T from taco. That spells eggplant. Our second mystery word is eggplant. Let's add that to our list of clues. There, now let's continue. Now it's time for our third mystery word. Photo number one. Photo number two. Photo number three. Photo number four. And photo number five. What is the mystery word? Well, 
let's find out what the mystery word is. Let's take the A from ant, the P from pie, the P from pen, the L from leaf, and the E from elevator. That spells apple. Apple is our third mystery word. Now, let's add that to our list of clues. Let's move on. Time for our fourth mystery word. Photo number one. Photo number two. Photo number three. Photo number four. Photo number five. Photo number six. What is the mystery word? Well, it's time to find out what the mystery word is. Let's take the C from cat, the H from hat, the E from elephant, the R from rug, the R from run, and the Y from yo-yo. That spells cherry. Our fourth mystery word is cherry. Let's add that to the list. Hmm, we almost got all of our clues. Can you guess what the word is? Well, it's time for our fifth and last mystery word. Photo number one. Photo number two. Photo number three. Photo number four. Photo number five. What is the mystery word? Well, it's time to find out what our mystery word is. Let's take the E from I, the T from T, the R from rock, the O from octopus, and the G from gold. That spells etrog. Now we can add our last clue. So, it's time to find out what our special mystery word is. Well, let's put all of the mystery words that we got together. Let's take the P from pear, the E from eggplant, the A from apple, the C from cherry, and the E from etrog. That spells peace. We figured it out. We figured out the mystery word. The mystery word is peace. Good job if you got it. Now it's time for a special game question. Can you spot all the differences in this photo? That was a very fun game. Now, let's get back to our reading and find out what happens to Paul and all the people on the ship in Acts chapter 27, verse 21 to 26. But after long absence, 
Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye shall have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed in Crete, and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. Wow! So after the storm started, Paul reminded the crew that he had warned them that the storm was coming and that they did not listen. And if they had listened, they would not have lost so much stuff. But he also said that they should be happy because an angel from God told him that they would survive the storm, all of them, but that they would be shipwrecked on an island. Let's keep reading and find out what happens next in Acts chapter 27, verse 27 to 32. And when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adrian, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under the color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Hmm. So, on the 14th night, they saw that they were starting to get even closer to land. So they lowered some anchors and they were about to abandon the ship. But Paul told them that if anyone left the ship, they would not be saved. I wonder what will happen next. Let's find out in Acts chapter 27, verse 33 to 44. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take me, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray you, to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when ye had spoken thus, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when the, it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded, if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves to the sea, and loosed the rubber band, and hosed up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. 
and fallen into a place where two seas met. They ran ship aground, and the forepart struck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves, and the soldier's counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea, and get to land, and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Wow. So later in the day, Paul told the crew that they should have something to eat because they had not eaten 14 days. So they all ate bread. The very next day, they saw land and lifted the anchors and started to sail to the land. But the waves broke the back of the ship and they all jumped off into the waves. And those who could swim, swim to land. And those who couldn't, held on to pieces of board and paddled. And everyone was safe. All 276 people that were on the ship with Paul was saved. Wow. Now, let's talk about the story of Paul and the shipwreck. Paul had peace during the time of storm. He was told by God that he would be saved, and he trusted in what God told him. He did not worry, and he even encouraged the rest of the crew to trust in the Lord. And just like Paul, we can have peace during hard times too. We can trust God no matter what. We have no reason to worry, no reason to doubt or fear, because God is greater than all of our worries. So we can have peace even when things seem to be falling apart around us, because we know that God is with us, just like Paul, and he will be with us in the midst of the storm. Wow. Now. I think it's time for us to read the verse of the day. It's time for the verse of the day. Today's verse of the day is Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is also become my salvation. Lots of things in life can cause us to worry. Worry is not from God. It causes us to fear and doubt. But we have no reason to fear or be afraid because God is greater than all of our fears, all of our doubts, all of our worries. He's stronger and he's mightier, and he's always with us. So we can trust in him, and we can believe in him, and we can have peace, even when things seem to be going wrong, or we're going through stressful situations, because God is always with us, and he's always there protecting us. Now, let's see how much you can remember from today's story. It's time for questions. Question number one. Where was Paul going? Was he going to Spain? Rome? Was he going to Florida? Or was he going to outer space? The correct answer was B. He was going to Rome. Question number two. What did Paul tell the people on the ship? Did he tell them to panic? Did he tell them to swim? Did he tell them not to fear? Or did he tell them to cry?
The correct answer was C. He told them not to be afraid. Question number three. Who told Paul to be brave? Was it his friend? His brother? The captain? Or an angel sent by God? The correct answer was D. An angel sent by God. Now, it's time for the question of the day. God wants us to have peace and trust in Him. What can we do when we find ourselves worrying? We could pray and talk to God. We could read God's words and read encouraging scriptures in the Bible. We could even talk to a family member or a trusted adult. It's normal for us to worry sometimes, but we should always remember that God is always with us and we should always trust in Him and not be afraid. And when we trust in Him, we can have peace no matter what. So, today, we learned all about having peace, trusting God, and not worrying about anything. Now, before we end, let's say a little prayer. Dear Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for always being with us, Lord. Lord God, as I come to you today, I praise your Lord God, that you may, Lord, Please help us not to worry, doubt, or fear, but help us, Lord, to trust in you. And help us, Lord, to have peace, even when we go through stressful situations. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, before you go, I have a song just for you. But for now, goodbye. I hope this Bible reading blessed your hearts. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please accept him today. Goodbye. Enjoy a song. <laughs>